For today's cup of coffee. Cup of coffee. Uh, we're having some kind of geomagnetic storms and all that stuff. Stefan Burns had talked about it a couple of days ago, and I don't know whether it's still going on or what. I'll, uh, if I remember, I will put it in the description box. Mm-hmm. But yeah. some some people have a tendency to um, for these events to affect us more strongly <clears throat> than others. Yeah. And it's like, my energy level has just been shit today. Yeah. It's never great, but this is just like, one minute I'll be I'll be all right for a few minutes, and then it's just like, damn, I gotta go lay down. Yeah. So you either lay down or fall down. Yeah. And it's you fall not, asleep sitting up. Yeah, I mean, and for it to be affecting a 25-year-old over here, it's not just me. No. Something that is affecting the 25-year-old over there, probably more than me, is a matter of... And I've got to kind of trying to find my, my links on this. Yes, I'm scattered. Uh, I'm scattered. About sensory overload, overstimulation. Uh-huh. And we've yeah. spoken about this before, but um, it needs... It bears repeating... <sighs> Because a lot of these things that we're seeing going on in society and stuff very much could be, it is a matter of brain breakage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and so there's a couple of articles that I would like to share with you. One of them is from, it's called charliehealth.com. In what ways is the brain breakage? Well, we're going to find out about it. Okay. And this was updated on April the 25th of 2024. And it's entitled, Here's Why You're Feeling Overstimulated and What to Do About It. And this is by Ethan Cohen, BSNRN, and it's clinically reviewed by Dr. Don Gasparani. Close enough. Sorry, Don. Gastrointestinal. Probably. And the article reads, Do you ever feel overwhelmed by what's happening around you? Maybe you feel uneasy because of bright lights in a room, the sound of multiple people talking, or music coming from an overheard speaker, Uh and the only way to feel relief is to remove yourself from the situation. Especially when everything is happening all at once. If this If this experience sounds familiar to you, you may be experiencing sensory overload, also known as overstimulation. Uh Uh-huh. And it says, for certain people, overstimulation can interfere with their ability to function on a daily basis. In fact, several mental health conditions can affect how a person receives and processes sensory information, leading to an increase in the frequency and severity of symptoms related to sensory overload. And we can learn more about the relationship between mental health and overstimulation and how to address the challenges that come with overstimulation. And... This actually was a very good article, and there was another one that was really close to it, so who knows who took who, what from whom. It says, what is overstimulation? And that describes a person, uh, when a person is feeling overwhelmed by sensory input around them. Any combination of sound, touch, taste, sight, smell, and loud noises can cause this reaction. Specifically, prolonged exposure to bright lights, certain sounds, strong smells, particular tactile stimulation, such as certain textures and materials, and crowded spaces are common triggers for sensory overload. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and a lot of this stuff does stem from the autisms, but I don't know if it's so much the autisms anymore. I think it's literally just where you're bombarded by too much of everything. Mm-hmm. And it says, during episodes of overstimulation, people experience the sensations around them to a greater extent than they usually would, leading to physical symptoms that can be disruptive, including headaches, dizziness, or lightheadedness, feeling ill, faint, or nauseous, increased anxiety and stress, irritability and agitation, issues with sleeping, emotional outburst, difficulty focusing, restlessness, and panic attacks. And says, 
that overstimulation happens in large part because of the brain. One of the brain's primary functions is to collect and process sensory information, but when there's too much sensory input, it can make the brain, brain think there's danger, sending off signals to the body to escape. This triggers the body's fight, flight, or freeze response, and feelings of anxiety, fear, and discomfort take over. We're seeing this everywhere right now. Yeah. Some research shows that people with certain sensory processing issues, including overstimulation, have quant uh, quantifiable differences in their brain structure, which may contribute to their difficulties. And I know that I have heard some of these influencers talking about there being, of course, there's some of these influencers that need to stay in their own damn lane. Mm -hmm. There is. And and the one that's like, oh, well, mental illness doesn't exist. And I'm thinking, you're an idiot. Which one said that? Matt Walsh. Oh, well, he's just I'll a call fucking him out. asshole anyway. He doesn't. He's the one that actually sat down and Jordan Peterson gave this man some of his time. And I don't think Walsh understood anything that Peterson was saying. I don't think he really wanted to either. Right. He is wise in his own eyes, and he's not going to allow anybody else to change his view on whatever. That's true of a lot of people wise today, in his, too. Wise in his own eyes. That means mm -hmm. he's blind. Absolutely. In Scripture, that's the definition of a fool. It says, for instance, early childhood trauma has been linked to structural brain changes that lead to processing issues, including sensory overload. Similarly, overstimulation is a common occurrence for individuals with disorders related to trauma, such as post-traumatic uh, stress disorder and acute stress disorder. Not every person who experiences overstimulation has structural changes to their brain, but it is important to keep these structural changes in mind when thinking about mental health and well-being. And, I, you know, especially during formative years, when a kid goes through trauma, mm -hmm. there's no way that it could not affect the structure of the brain. Right. Now, see, to me, that is just a given. I, I don't know why there's so much debate about this. People not wanting to accept reality and wanting to be like, oh, no, you're just... You're just this way because you don't really want to work hard enough right. or whatever. Pushing the blame. It, it's onto gaslighting. The end, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's, if you want to call it victim blaming. And that's I hate what that. a lot of the shit that Matt, Matt Walsh does. It, it is. It's not only him. It's a lot of these people that they don't want to see a different perspective. And I see that all over the place, too. Because they're, they're pandering to their viewer base. Mm -hmm. Nothing more. Which uh, that maybe their viewer base is also warped in their perspectives well, as well. Well, sure. If you're not willing to sit down and listen to someone else's point of view, then it's everything. That's a stalemate. Yeah. That's a clusterfuck, which is what we have currently. Also. Yeah. And it says, feeling overwhelmed can happen to anyone, but overstimulation is more common in people with certain co-occurring developmental and mental health conditions. Here are several conditions commonly associated with sensory overload. Autism spectrum disorder, mm -hmm. and that is a developmental disorder marked by challenges in social interaction, communication, and repetitive behaviors. People with ASD uh, perceive sensory information differently than others and for this reason sensory overload is a common experience for people with asd their typical sensory processing can lead to various behavioral emotional and physical responses that can significantly impact their lives mm -hmm. and autism is something that <coughs> excuse me where it has been around for a very long time there are those that believe that the epidemic, and it is in epidemic proportions, could be vaccine injuries. That is something that uh, the Kennedy dude has talked about a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first time that I saw a child that had autism uh, was I was in high school. And that we used to go every year. It was, they had, and they need something like this again. It, they called it the 
Uh, this is before political correctness, folks. Believe it or not, there was a time that we did, that the world was totally different. <laughs> it was the multi-handicapped special needs school. Yeah. And and this was a child that was that he did not have high functioning autism, and that he did have to. Um, I think that he was in maybe like a wheelchair or some kind of something like that. And that he had to have the padded helmet because that he would bang his head against the wall. Yeah. And it's still <clears throat> unknown to a certain degree why children or individuals who have that amount of autism, why they do those types of self-harm behaviors. And it was just one of those, <coughs> it was heart-wrenching. Yeah. And that, but it was important for us, or at least it was important for me to understand that there are people out there that have severe needs. Mm -hmm. And at least those, those kids had, I mean, the people that worked at that school, they were amazing. And they shut it down. Let me guess. The libs? Mm-hmm. Yep. They didn't want the stigma. And to try to put children with those that degree of difficulty in a regular classroom that does everyone a disservice. Mm -hmm. You experienced that in your elementary school. I did. And then the I had my own challenges, but damn, but <coughs> she, the whole class catered to her. Right, and and because that you had that, and it's like someone has to question. If that child who needed the extra attention had not been in the regular classroom, would the learning challenges that you have been diagnosed or observed earlier? We don't know. Don't know. Just because somebody's got a college degree does not mean that they know anything. We have found that out in, in no uncertain terms. That's true, but also mine would have been kind of difficult to diagnosed earlier anyway considering i am high functioning so well it has nothing to do with that it had to do with that you had a visual issue had a visual issue had a comprehension issue yes. as far as certain letters or not letters but reading math but that was because of the visual issue yeah <coughs> it, it's just i mean it, this kid he fell through the cracks in every conceivable way in the public school and it's a thing the next one is ADHD, which is attention deficit, attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder. Mm -hmm. What happens a lot of times is that the brain processes faster than the mouth and the eyes. Yeah. That was a challenge for me when I was learning how to play piano, but they didn't know the term ADHD then. No. And they said it's a common disorder that causes hyperactivity, impulsive behavior, and trouble paying attention. People with ADHD have differences in the way they process sensory information. And for this reason, they may be more sensitive or reactive to sensory stimuli in their environment. Mm -hmm. Additionally, they may have difficulty filtering out irrelevant sensory information. And for this reason, also people with ADHD are prone to overstimulation and the frustration, irritability, and anxiety that comes with it. And there are some studies that suggest that childhood trauma can present and or cause or correlate with ADHD. Really? Yes. Didn't know that. Yes. Hmm. I mean, it's a brain difference. That's yeah. what it is. It's brain difference. Loves it. And then as far as post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, it's a mental health condition that can happen in people who've experienced or witnessed a traumatic event. And these people experience long-term negative effects related to their initial trauma, including hypervigilance and hyperarousal. For people with PTSD, exposure to triggering sensory stimuli can cause feelings of anxiety and panic. For this reason, people with PTSD are constantly on high alert concerning their surroundings. It's common that they might feel overstimulated by sensory cues that remind them of their initial trauma. And for some people, the cues are subconscious. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they and don't... 
Yeah. It's very difficult to... uh, Because when you're triggered, it's very difficult to figure out, Mm -hmm. okay, what the fuck just triggered me? Mm Mm-hmm. What just and, happened? And, and as far as this is just talking about the psychological and different things like that, but there is a book, it's called The Body Bears the Burden, and I, I can't remember who the author was, but it is the somatic or the body response to trauma and different things like that, because there's no separation. It is mind, body, and spirit. Mm-hmm. And that one of the examples that they had used was that someone was in a store and a display of crackers or something like that had fallen over and one of the boxes had hit somebody on the shoulder or whatever. And they had, I mean, it had not, it was a box of crackers. But for whatever reason, because of the person's previous trauma, it caused some really severe physical whatever, like they couldn't walk or something like that. It's It's incredible. And then we have, as far as anxiety disorders, certain types of anxiety disorders can lead to overstimulation. The most characteristic example can be found in people who suffer from specific phobias, especially social phobia, also known as social anxiety disorder. For individuals with social anxiety disorder, the overstimulation that is caused by social settings produces an overwhelming stress response, leading to avoidance behavior. We're seeing that more and more and more and my god since 2020 and the clusterfuck that that was that was collective ptsd yeah oh yeah see i've already been even before the pandemic happened the panoramic i was already dealing with that shit that that's not fun still trying to get over that shit it ain't it ain't fun right that's like you know lady that came down here that drained me mm-hmm. that was and it was a pleasant experience yeah, it was a but pleasant it was experience. still draining yeah and it like seriously she was a wonderful person i enjoyed her company it's just that oh. social battery is always in the red yeah always but also like i could tell you like i was nervous as i'll get out the whole damn time i was trying to play cool yeah but it's just it's still there and it it just goes literally your mental energy your physical energy just Mm -hmm. goes down 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 right and when you're forced into those situations it does it just makes it worse Mm -hmm. and they're saying as far as creating ways to deal with it to create a support network um identify your triggers create a safe space and develop a plan and communicate your needs and that's easier said than done on a lot of this it is the other thing that i had found that because because i have moon and gemini and i'm constantly curious and i have internet this is something that i was familiar with but it's still really good and this is um august the 20th of 2022 and is by Valentina Fernandez. I like that name, Valentina. I like a pretty name. Yeah. And this is from Dartmouth something. I don't know what it is. Social media, dopamine, and stress converging pathways. Hmm. And she says that why does social media make us unhappy? And the feeling of insecurity and anxiety after a period of scrolling through meaningless posts has become universal. I don't do that, but I don't stay on it all day. I mean, I will I will interact for a period of time, and then I wander off and do something else, so I make my ADHD work for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it says, on the other extreme, and with this article, she has cited a lot of sources, so this article will be included, and you can go down your own rabbit hole with her sources on the other extreme the feeling of euphoria and relief that overcome us when we receive likes on our most recent post has also become common but why but why <laughs> but why? how does social media have the power to be both so constructive and destructive simultaneously what are the underlying mechanisms of social media apps responsible for the sudden rush of joy as well as the dip in self-esteem 
It says in 2005, only 5% of American adults used at least one social media platform. Today, the number has skyrocketed to 72%, or about 7 out of every 10 Americans. That's a lot. Uh Uh-huh. That's the majority. Mm Mm-hmm. It says, among the American population, young adults have the highest and most frequent usage of social media. And again, this formative period, even up until you've got that frontal lobe shrinkage until about the age of 20, and it depends on whoever, about 23 to 25. Mm -hmm. So this is a vulnerable population. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they has done some shit. Mm-hmm. Which, like, literally, mm-hmm. Gen Z parents are the first generation to actually be like, yeah, let's not give right. kids tech until they're a certain age. Right. Right. And it says about 95% of U.S. teens across, uh, have access, rather. Let me start that over. About 95% of U.S. teens have access to a smartphone and 45% are online almost constantly. With such ubiquitous engagement with social media platforms, it has become increasingly necessary to evaluate the molecular underpinnings that allow social media to exert the effect it does on its users. Mm -hmm. Many of the interactions that occur via social media platforms are a replication and now extension of those that used to happen in person. Social media strips real-world exchanges of their limits. People become reachable at all hours of the day and at any location in the world. In this sense, social media platforms extend and perhaps enhance the social exchanges of in-person communication. Thus, the relationship between online and real-world social uh, sociality sociality my god what a word (laughs) may be considered a new playing field for the same game the specific mechanisms involved therefore parallel those felt in the real world for example the feeling of rejection that is experienced through social media activates the same regions in the brain that respond to real world rejection From a neurological perspective, this means that the brain circuitry implicated in reward is involved. Thus, specifically, includes hyperactivation of the stratum and the uh, ventral tegumal area, the VTA. Don't ask me to repeat that. Which are specific regions of the brain that have uh, neuronal clusters Uh, dedicated to reward, motivation, and cognition. Studies have found that when social media users receive positive feedback, the excitatory synapses in these regions of the brain are activated. In particular, the dopamine receptors, which have affinity for the dopamine neurotransmitter, are activated and action potentials are subsequently propagated through neural networks. And that comes from the article, The Psychology of Social Media. Mm. Dopamine is one of the key neurotransmitters involved in reward pathways, memory motivation, and movement. Thus, the short-term dopamine-driven feedback loops lure users into coming back for more, feeding into a social media addiction. Just like after a successful social interaction, dopamine is released after receiving positive feedback in social networks. Put briefly, these social media platforms leverage the same neural circuitry used by slot machines and cocaine to keep us using their products, states Harvard Medical School research technician Trevor Haynes in his piece, Dopamine, Smartphones, and You, A Battle for Your Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that came out in in 2018. Mm Mm-hmm. It says, over time, the abundant release of dopamine for some in quantities that are abnormally high causes a deficit in the brain. Users experience less pleasure when they are not using social media because the dopamine is pushed to levels below the baseline. 
Dr. Anna Limbeck, a psychiatry professor, explains, quote, we go into a dopamine deficit state. That's the way the brain restores homeostasis. If there's a huge deviation upward, then there's going to be a deviation downward. That's essentially the come down, that moment of wanting to stay online and click on one more video or connect with one more person. And in the short term, the dopamine deficit manifests as depression and anxiety, and it mimics the same symptoms and feelings. Over time, they may exert effects on the synaptic plasticity of the specific pathways involved. So it's altering the brain structure in addition to altering the brain chemistry. Synapses are the junctions between neurons that are responsible for communication. Effects in their plasticity would specifically impact the excitability of the specific synapse, which dictates how active or inactive they are. As social media use continues to rise, particularly among adolescents, it is of utmost importance to recognize the way these platforms exploit our brain psychology in a drug-like manner. That's some shit. In one interview, I love this line. In one interview, Dr. Limbeck noted, quote, that social media has become a way to drugify human connection, end quote. And that is a good way of putting that. It's some shit. It really is. Like, it's fucking people up. Mm Mm-hmm. Junkies. And these millennial parents just doing that to their kids from babies. Yeah. Because they don't know any better. It's not that they don't know any better. They don't care. Well, it's because... Now, let's put it this way. They themselves are brain damaged. We think about as far as street drugs. And we understand the basis of a lot of people becoming addicts is because that they have, you know, especially childhood trauma that has not been properly addressed and they're trying to self-medicate. With the social media, a lot of times there does not even have to be the childhood trauma. It becomes a form of self-medication. But the result is very similar in the fact that there's going to be withdrawal. Mm -hmm. And we know that people, when they're on their whatever that they're using, the meth heads especially, they are not themselves. No. Because they are under... It's not the person controlling the person. It's the drug controlling the person, which is why I believe it's a form of possession. Yeah. Because when they get off of the shit and they find out what they've done, the shame, the guilt, the remorse is just unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times that they don't. And and what is weird also about meth and some of these things, it can take the brain about a year to clear some of that stuff out, Mm -hmm. sometimes more. And the research that I'm familiar with, unless they have come up with something new over the past few years, meth, it sort of deadens the ability of the brain to sense pleasure, which is horrifying to think that somebody would put a substance in their body that after they stop using it, they would miss out on enjoying the smile of their children or a loved one or anything like that yeah that's horrific it is and i would have to go back and look and see what exactly if it was dopamine that uh meth you know it was sort of within that uh chemical reaction again or not we don't know that it's not the same with social media no but the thing is, because it's not a drug-induced thing, how long is that going to take the brain to get back to normal? Probably about the same thing. We don't know. Because there's not an, it's an external stimuli, but it's not the same as putting an actual drug drug into the body. Yeah. Because all this technology is so new, no one knows. Well, someone has to know. Well, I think the ones who know... Are the ones that are misusing it. Yep. Yep. And we know who those are. Or at least we know who they're being puppeted by. Yeah. Yeah. But that was just one of those. Yeah, it was light if and you fluffy know, you for know. today. 
that I was to, light and fluffy. To, yeah, drugify human connection. That is just hmm. perilous times, folks. Perilous times. Mm-hmm. Final thoughts, kid. Light and fluffy. I'm joking. I'm being facetious. I know. You I'm are. sorry. I forgot to have my neon sign that says sarcasm. I'm sorry. I forgot to have mine on too. <laughs> Oh, it's some shit. Mm-hmm. It's some shit. It's though. frightening. Honestly, though, when I was up there in Cornerstone, that was the best detox, mm-hmm. social media detox. It was yes. nice. All we had was the TV. And yeah, you could watch YouTube all the time, but it was not really like you could not just go in there and click it any time that you wanted to. Right. And it's a matter of making choices, good choices, what you're watching. Yeah. If you are going from video to video to video or post to post to post things that are upsetting to you, maybe you need to back off just a little while. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're finding yourself anxious or fearful or anything like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you know, get off the fucking drama community thing. Mm-hmm. I have to catch myself on that. No, I, I don't. Mm-mm. I was, I was like, the, I was watching the baby pig swim in that one video. That, you're like, all you do is watch <laughs> animal videos all day. Yeah, that's why. Well, no, I mean it's a matter of when some of the I'm cog, cognizant, or I try to be conscious and cognizant of the things that I share. You know, mm. even even on my my ex account and stuff, because I would rather it be, and it's got a mix of a lot of different things. Something that's beautiful or uplifting or funny or sharing someone's artwork because I find beauty in, in it's goth. We find beauty in things that are grotesque. I don't know how people um, can can strive. Basically, just that's all they consume. Mm-hmm. They consume the news. They consume the like. That's all. They they consume the news. They consume the drama community. They consume the true crime. And shit. then they wonder why Hor- that they th- are anxious. Yeah. Or that they're out there doing strange things. I, I don't know how people get addicted to listening to true crime because like that shit that really does fuck with me after mm-hmm. a while. The, th- the thought I've, that somebody could be that evil. Yeah. Well, and it's the same thing as far as different types of music. If it has the negative lyrics, words have tremendous power. I can say that Kylie Minogue does not have negative music. No, she's just had dance music. I've never heard any, her say anything that was not, you know. I mean, Tears on My Pillow, but that was a cover. Right. I mean, you know. But that wasn't that light, that bad of a song. Well, that was always like the joke. Like a truly joke. sad song. That was always the joke back in the day about country music. It was fucking depressing. I was like, that was why. You go outside, shoot yourself, shoot the dog. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like go out in the field and get drunk. And that was the reason that you had a lot of these country western bars that they would play the, the country music at the time. And that you it was a high percentage of alcoholics. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Let's sit and dwell on, on that shit. Yeah. That's not. No, that's not healthy there are so many resources for people available today mm-hmm. yeah you know and if they want it but you got to want the help it's like a steady diet of horror games is not good for the psyche either no i don't think so i don't think so of, of any of that stuff i have it's like have a balanced diet on what you're consuming mentally spiritually all oh, that stuff. Join the Smooth Brain Gang. Smooth Brain Gang. <laughs> oh, anyhow. We may be a little dunce, but it's okay. It's okay. We happy most of the time. As long as you got cookies. We got cookies. Gluten-free cookies. We got gluten-free cookies. We got okay. anything that, that will suit your dietary needs. <laughs> <laughs> this is why humor is something that can be remarkably healing. And that's why a lot of the things that we discuss that we're not going as hardcore on that, some of that stuff, we purposefully try, we present information. And a lot of times we do make fun of the absurdity because it's how you defeat that darkness. Mm-hmm. But you've also know, got to know from time to time what the hell it is that you're fighting. So we be educational and shit. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural, encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, tin foil hats, if you have interesting research that you would like to share with us, you can send us an email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And uh, that's there in the description box. And the links to the articles and that, that last article that I read, she's got her sources cited. Mm-hmm. So you can go through Good. there and there's all kinds of rabbit holes you can go down. Be careful of the rabbit holes. Knowledge is power. See, yeah. that's the thing. A lot of the stuff I, I I watch now, it's either I'm learning about shit. It may not be shit that, that, that everybody's interested in. It doesn't matter. People in. are geared to do different things in life. Yeah. Like, it's usually like, try to learn about sewing. Mm-hmm. How, what the fuck to do with the car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Mowing. I, I watch a lot of HGTV back in the day. I yeah, really they did. teach you stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Loved that channel. Sure. And I love the travel channel. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. So you're going to go do your outro thing? If you like this video, leave a comment, like, share. What? Get your face up on that microphone. Okay, I'll eat it. (laughs) Full face right on the microphone. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, share. Click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads, even though I don't know if it does much. But it, li- it likes the affection. Give it a ding. Check her out on Bitch Shoot and Rumble. Rolanda's Cup of Coffee with Scream. Also check her out on X, previously known as Twitter. I think it should go back to Twitter because you tweet. It doesn't matter. I'm Gen X. I don't care. Rolanda, C-O-C-W-S. It's like a radio station call sign, so easy to find her on there. If you type in Orlando, you'll find her, all right? Yeah. Do it. Do it. Follow her. Yeah. Do it. That's like, I don't know what the hell happened with the previous Cups uploads. And it's like, I was, as long as I've been doing this, I have honestly had made very few mistakes on shit like that, the technical aspect as far as uploading and everything. And got to looking and it's like, I thought, what? Uploaded very quickly. I don't know. And got up this morning, and it's like it was a two-minute clip <laughs> of the spoopy pie. And so I had to try to take that down off of two platforms, off of BitChute and YouTube, and re-upload it. And then I had comments, and I'm like, ha. Ah. <laughs> it's just one of those days. It is. Shit happens. Oh, Word of advice, it messes up the algorithm for your uploads. Don't actually delete a video, just set it to private. Now you tell me. Well, you didn't ask. I didn't know that you deleted it. The algorithm I I hates you that. me. It hates me. No, it doesn't. It's just because we're doing a format that not many people are going to enjoy. So, <laughs> as far as people just... need to see us rather than just hear us. We d- we try to do that that there there's nothing to see here so people can go about their daily routines while they listen. Mama, when Jenna and Julian were doing the broadcast, was there much to see there? I no. didn't pay any attention. Exactly. Okay. So no. <laughs> All right. Whatever. Maybe we need to do something on Spotify or something. I don't know what is it charged to put on Spotify. I don't know. I don't know how any of this shit works. Anyhow, we'll ponder that in for another cup. Know that you are loved. Treat other people the way that you would like to be treated. Uh Uh-huh. And Lord willing, we'll see you on the next cup. Yeah. Bye. Bye.